What's up, Tutorinos? Welcome back to the Game Addicts Podcast, the show where we're talking about the modern retro video games that we play and collect. I am this podcast player, one Brando, and joining me here today is this podcast player, too, Mike. Hello. Hello, good sir. We are back live for the first time in about a month, good sir. Welcome back to the show, Mike. Yes, thank you. Now, those of you who listen to us and watch us, uh, you know, pretty religiously, you like, well, you guys didn't go anywhere. Well, we pre-recorded some episodes because Mike was going out to get some stuff taken care of with his face and get some surgeries done, and we did that. That way you guys wouldn't miss out on any content. We were we shifted the schedule to go to every other week, but for right now, we're heading back to every week. We're going to try and hit you back with some more gaming news and some scamming stuff that, we're been, that we've been playing, that we've been into, and we're going to do that here today as well. But, you know, we actually recorded an episode already as like a little kind of dip in the toe back in the water uh but yeah. this is our first live one this is our first live one we did another retrospective but we don't know when exactly it'll air but you know it, it's one of my favorite one the ones that we've done so far uh we kind of went back and revisited uh, not an official one but those of you who have listened to us for a very long time maybe you guys will know which one it is but mike holy crap uh i've missed doing this uh show with you live every single week uh with with you gone, because I, I know I went on vacation right before uh, you went out, but like not getting my daily or at least weekly like video game fix was really weird. <laughs> yeah, that yeah. was definitely. Uh... <laughs> it seriously was. Man. It seriously was because I mean, I, there's not uh, too many people at work that I could talk to about games as in depth as I can with you. So right. Uh, on like on that note, it was like um, like I I would see something and I would tell somebody and I would not get the same kind of reaction than when I would get than from you. You know, it it would be a very like a uh, you know generic. Oh yes, this okay. No, nah, no, like like when it's you, it's usually like you have you have something to retort to me with, right? And today, guys, we're going to be looking at uh. Some news that is not necessarily late breaking right now. I think it came out last week. But of course, with the PS5 specs being announced, some rumors about the Xbox. Of course, we have the all digital edition coming out in May. And then some Switch stuff that maybe is of note. But uh, Mike, you have been gone. You've been down and out. What have you been playing? Not much. I've been playing a little bit of the uh pc game path of exiles that's about it because recovery was not very good it first three days i was absolutely like not leaving the bedroom i <laughs> a few times and it was bad so i played the path of exiles because it's one of those games where you can play it and you you can do it for 10 15 minutes and then just stop and move on to do you know whatever it is so for me it was like i'd come in here and start playing it and then i'd feel really bad so i was like okay back to the bedroom I'm done so i did that off and on all the two weeks i was out so other than that nothing i have been in a slump of what i want to play you mean you haven't been playing anthem <laughs> no <laughs> Has actually it... today is the first time that i actually logged back into origins and it's like oh you have a four gigabyte download again i did see today there was a headline about some stuff being delayed uh for anthem some updates and whatnot yes. uh but i'm not you know again i'm not really big into anthem uh i'm I, i'm not getting into that at all so uh, I really didn't look into it to see what the big dealio was with that. Me personally, 
I have been kind of in a slump, too. I haven't really been knowing what to play. I'm in that mode where I don't know what I'm in the mood for. So I just... I, I come in here, I look at all these games, and I'm like, oh, this one, maybe that one. You know, maybe I'll take one off the shelf, I'll look at it, and I'm like, maybe you, okay. And uh, if something compelled me to, you know, get back into The Witcher. So really, I took it, went and put it in the Xbox, and loaded it up, and I'd already been, you know, I was already, you know, playing the game, and I was already, you know, well into it. I had a save already. But I remember nothing. I don't know what I'm doing. I don't know... Who is doing what? I, I, and then the controls, I could not, you know, acclimatize myself to them. Uh, as far as, like, it felt like I was moving so fast. I felt like I was the Flash running around. It was just, like, zooming around so fast. And, and I'm like, man, I'm, not, I'm just not feeling this kind of, like, I thought maybe I would be, you know? Because I, right. I, I'm kind of in that mode of that style uh, of, like, kind of medieval fantasy. I mean, of course, you know, Game of Thrones is out now. So I thought maybe maybe I could just slip right back in here and play some more because I had played the game and then was you know, well into it, and then Breath of the Wild came out. I mean, this is like two years ago now or three years ago, whatever, like, however long it's been since Breath of the Wild. And so I said no. Uh, I backed out. And, of course, I'm on the Xbox One, and uh, I see the ad for for Game Pass, which if anybody doesn't know right now, if you're a new subscriber, you can get Game Pass three months for a dollar. Uh, right now, great deal. But but remember to cancel it uh, if you don't want to keep it after that because they will charge you thirty dollars for three months, which is how much it would be. You know, it's ten dollars right. a month. So, but it's ten dollars per three months. Uh, that's sort of like the agreement that you kind of uh, like. Pretty much, it, it's it, you know, it's the every three months deal. And uh, I'm like, well, I've already kind of had that. I can't get that again. Yes, I can. I did get it. Maybe it'll work for you too. I got Game Pass for three months for a dollar. So I think I'm still on my dollar one, so I don't think it'll work. Mm -hmm. Uh no, I don't know. But, you know, looking through the games that they had to select from, there's a lot of games I haven't played on there, of course. And of course, there, you know, I'm like, oh dude, I could play Forza again because I still have it installed. You know, I have all this, you know, I had all these games that I wanted to play, and then I saw it. Shadow of the Tomb Raider. I hadn't played it. It came out the same week as Spider-Man, so I chose Spider-Man over it. And, uh, you know, not a bad decision there, but I never did pick it up. I've seen it in the stores. I went, I need to get it back to that. Yeah, sh yeah I want to play it. Uh, unfortunately, uh, like a month later, it was like half price, if you remember. Uh, like, yeah. things for that game just kind of fell apart. There's nothing wrong with this game. I, I played, uh, I'm about a quarter of the way through. There's nothing wrong with it. It plays just like the other ones. There's, it's more Tomb Raider. In fact, there's more, like, you have like these little hub cities I'm on my second one so far, and you can go around and you can talk to certain people. You can get background information. You can get, uh, you know, some side quests to do. And, uh, the, you know, it, it, it gets you more into... The, the only thing that I'm kind of like weirdly, like, scratching my head about is, like, right at the moment where I'm at in the story, I'm in Peru. And I'm in this city, and this is the second place that I've been. And it's like, all right, uh, how come everybody speaks plain english uh hmm. i mean it's they, they they all have an accent but everybody speaks english uh, and very clearly and they can understand laura and it, and i'm just like hmm and she can understand this so, like it, so it's one of those things that like are they supposed to be speaking another language and laura just knows it and is speaking it but they're not doing that to so that way they don't have to subtitle the whole game uh, or is it just like you know what part is it because i i know that and you and you probably don't know this but in snake eater the whole game's in english they're in russia right they're they're in russia in medical solid 2 they had russian guards rush like russian sentries and they all had they, they had a russian accent like this hmm, what was that noise but then hmm. in snake yeah. eater they, they sound hmm, what was that you know normal and then when you right. when snake talks to other characters it's all in english no accents and that's because they're they're speaking english or russian the whole time almost but they didn't go through. The, they even say, "Hmm, your Russian's really good," but they say it in English just like that. Eh. You know, so in other words, like, oh, so they're speaking Russian this whole time, and but like, and it's a Kojima twist, so maybe we're Russian and we just don't know. But <laughs> maybe, maybe that's how it is. But that's the only thing about the two meter game that, like, I'm walk, I'm running around this little like this kind of like city talking to people, and I'm like, that that is nitpicky as crap. 
but it just makes me scratch my head. The game is fun. It's more Tomb Raider, uh, you know, along the new lines from the remake and then Rise of the Tomb Raider. Absolutely nothing wrong with this game uh, other than, like, the whole you know, grind to upgrade your weapons, upgrade her. I'll do all that stuff all over again. There's more stuff to buy now. Uh, so I'm trying to figure out, and, and it's all and it's all really expensive. So I'm like trying to figure out where I'm supposed to get all this gold at. But <laughs> and I, I got there, and I got three different shops now in this town. You know, the first place I go to, I had one shop, and there's like th- you know four things in there that I want to buy. You can buy supplies now to kind of upgrade your stuff there from them too. So if, so if you got that's the fine. if you got the extra gold and you don't want to hunt it down, you can try and buy it there. So that's kind of neat. Uh, as I said, uh, the game's good. Uh, the thing is, is that the story is very Tomb Raidery. Uh, the, the, this guy, he has a dagger and he wants to remake the world with it. He, he, he's going to put it in this box and it's causing all this cataclysms and he's going to remake the world in his image. So, uh, it's very Tomb Raider. Uh, right. You, you know, gets into that sort of like, uh, science fiction, uh, magical stuff, you know, you know, it kind of does that and. I'm enjoying my run with it. If you guys don't have Game uh, Game Pass, please get it. Uh, it is a great deal. Even if you're playing on PC, I don't think all the games are on PC. Uh, I think they have a certain list, so please look that up. As I was trying to pull it up, but it, I didn't. It was like wanting to play stuff in the background, so. Yeah, yeah. well, you know how that stuff goes. But mm-hmm. yeah, Game Pass is definitely a plus for if you have an Xbox or PC. I know that the game, le- uh, the game list is shorter for PC. I do know that for a fact. Because I saw it probably around the time you were looking to get it, and I wanted to see what was all on there. It does have, uh, still has a lot of stuff on there. It still has a lot of the uh, uh, Microsoft stuff, as far as like you know, Halo and uh, and Forza and that kind of and that kind of stuff along those lines. But uh, you know what? Let, let let let's just go right. It's, we're already on the Xbox stuff. So the Xbox All Digital Edition comes out in May. It's already up for pre order uh, for you guys to get at two. Fifty at two, you know, two hundred dollars, two hundred and fifty dollars, and the suggested retail price for an Xbox One S with a disc drive is supposed to be more than that. However, you can get it cheaper, my friend. Did you know this? Did I know this that you can get it cheaper? That you can get an, an original Xbox One S with a disk drive cheaper than you can get the all digital edition. Yes. Okay. So, guys, if you have, um, you know, the wits about you to go and try and find a bundle or, you know, to try and find a sale deal, of course, around the holidays are always cheaper. So, the Xbox One all digital edition, it has no disk drive. The, the, the system looks no different other than they took the disk drive out. I feel like this is a big missed opportunity, Mike. I feel like... Yeah. Well, because they could have completely reshaped the console without a disk drive in it. It doesn't have to be the same shape. They could have made it right. smaller. They they could have made it smaller and more compact for you to fit into your entertainment systems. They could have made it... I mean, I, I don't... Like, like, do you remember the... Um, the... Like, the the little Wii Minis? Yeah. You know? how yeah. like Like, those little red Wiis. They're, like they were even smaller than uh like than the original Wii's and the Wii's are tiny, dude. Like even if even if it was just the size of a Wii or a Wii U, that is drastically cutting down the size of the console, and that is an that is an attractive feature for somebody who might even who, they might already have an Xbox One, but they might be they might want to put one in their bedroom or they might want to put one uh like in another room or 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 have one like for, as a, as like a travel version if you're going to want to go on vacation or on a travel trip you can take it with you like because you can still go on your video streaming services maybe you're not going to want to bring your games with you but you can have game pass or some digital games you already have downloaded on there and the game uh the all digital edition does come with three games included it comes with three download codes and those are two of them I'm not too you know keen about one of them is you know, cool, but I kind of wish it was a different one. Uh, Minecraft, yeah, that's a typical pack and bundle game. Sea of right. Thieves, okay, and then Forza Horizon Three. I'm not gonna dog Forza Horizon Three, but I kind of wish it was the newest one, Four, because like that game's awesome. And at this point, the game is like uh like over half a year old, so why not bundle it with it? I- yeah, I don't understand that. I mean, you need to have something a little bit newer. 
so you get three games. I mean, that that's still not a bad deal for two fifty. But when you consider that, if you look just on Amazon right now, uh, and uh, and that's a terabyte version as well. So, right now, the first one I see, the Battlefield Five bundle, Xbox One terabyte, you know, Xbox One S terabyte bundle, two thirty. So twenty dollars off. You get the game of Battlefield Five, and you get the console and a disc drive where you can play 4K media. And you can buy right. physical games. And so it's like, that doesn't make any damn sense to me. Here's another one. There's only one left in stock on Amazon, though. The NBA 2K9, uh, 19 bundle for 216 Again, you get NBA 2K19, the, which was last year's title. And uh, it is almost like $40 cheaper. And you get a disk drive. Uh, here's one. Uh, this one, only one left in stock. It, it, it is the Minecraft bundle. It's it's two twenty three. And it's two twenty three. Two twenty three, and you get Minecraft, and you get, uh, <laughs> uh, you know, you get the Xbox One S uh, Minecraft Creators Bundle. So this is a little bit different. Again, these are discontinued bundles, but Amazon still has some of them available. And this one is uh, we, like, what do you get? You get Minecraft. Minecraft mine coins, Minecraft starter pack, and then the creators pack. So you get all that. Instead of just getting the base game, you get a whole bunch of other stuff to get you started. Uh, and okay, so it's like, does the all digital edition with Minecraft, with Sea of Thieves, with Forza Horizon three, not four, but three, does that equal a value enough to spend two fifty when you can spend less on these bundles right here? I don't think yeah. so. No. I I think this is it, a, you said it, it, the 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 all digital is one terabyte or two. It's one, one terabyte. One. So literally, it's more, and you lose your disk drive, but you get two extra games. You get two extra games, uh, but then those games, if you install them, those are taking up space. Red Dead Redemption Two is a hundred gigabyte game plus the updates. Uh, think about how big uh, the uh, if you go get Game Pass. Okay, cool. I mean, Game Pass is amazing. Just like I said, I'm that is one thing Microsoft has going for them that I think is the biggest thumbs up about them. I think that is a great, you know, gateway to the future of what gaming as a service could be. But Master Chief Collection, yeah, you know, how big is that game? Halo Five. How big is that game? You know, you know. You put any of these on here, <laughs> like Sea of Thieves is a good one, but a lot of people stop playing it because it's just they call it Sea of Z's. <laughs> yeah, right. Now, like I was referring more to the fact that like you only have a one terabyte hard drive, so you're, this thing's going to get full pretty fast. Now, of course, really ease of use. You can hook up any third party USB. Uh, you know, external hard drive to this to extend it. So that's, you know, boom, plug and play. You're good to go. But I still say they missed a gigantic opportunity at reshaping. You know, this is the a the last iteration of the, of the Xbox One that we're going to get before the next generation. Why not take this opportunity to downsize the damn thing? It doesn't have a disk drive. That's empty space in there. You're telling me you can't squeeze the... the all the chips, the the GPUs, the CPUs on something the size of a freaking Wii U or something. You can do it. Everything. You can do it. I, I know you can. At this point, come on. You can. You can squeeze it in there. You can put in the hard even, drive. Even, That's... If, even if, even if you didn't, give us another terabyte so that it's actually plausible to buy when I can buy this the s model which it pretty much all that is is the s model but yeah. all digital so why not buy the s model with right. the hard drive so or here's the drive here's a picture i'm not going to put it up on the stream because i don't have any pictures up ready to go today okay it's too white damn it it's too white you can't see it it is literally it looks like the s model with no disk drive. It's just blank. It's like none, like nothing there. Basically, they're charging more for a missing feature. When okay, here's the thing: if you are going to go all digital version, okay, let's just say that like well, like they like if you go 
I'm going to go and do a Google search. Okay, let's go to, you know, screw it, uh, Best Buy, right? Best Buy. Let's go to bestbuy.com right now, and let's see how much their Xbox One S's are. Like, just the, just the plane, because that was Amazon. Amazon's a little crazy sometimes. They got some good deals going on, you know? I mean, I mean, let's face it. Amazon is pretty much putting everybody else out of business and can probably afford uh, to have some extra yeah. deals on some games. So Xbox yeah, One consoles. We're going to go to their consoles, and we're going to check this stuff out. So, Xbox One S, one terabyte Fortnite bundle. <laughs> really? It, it, it's free. <laughs> it's okay. silly. I know, stupid. What? But, the, but, but this is the okay. So this is the disc. Um, uh, this is the disc system. Okay, the it's on sale right now. It's normally three hundred. You can get it for two fifty. You can get the Tom Clancy's Division Two console for two fifty. So you get the game and, and, and a disc base. You get the NBA two K, which is what I just said earlier, and that and that's two fifty on here. Microsoft Creators, that that's, that's two fifty on here. So all those they're on sale right now for two fifty. Uh, or hey, Mike, do you want to go pre order the all digital for two fifty as well, where you get three games and you can't put any more discs in it? No, I don't either. I mean, it's ridiculous. If if you're gonna go all digital version, if you're at least make it cheaper. If, if this is gonna be on sale a lot throughout the year at two fifty, or even near holiday season, one eighty nine for certain bundles. Baseline price for the all digital version needs to be two hundred or less. Right now, Walmart has the Battlefield Five bundle for two hundred thirty three ninety five. Again, with cheaper, a little bit, but with a feature that the digital version is missing—a disk drive. It's a freaking disk drive. If you're taking a feature out, that should cost less. And for them, they're like, "Well, it, it's supposed to be three hundred. These stores are putting on—they're always putting it on sale." You're, it's because it's 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 done. I mean, like, it's not. The X is out, and that's the new. So they're treating it like an old generation. Well, not necessarily, but it's two different models. There's the intro model, then there's the premium model. But the but the, but the thing is, is that like the intro model is attractive to people who you know want a gaming thing that isn't super powerful in 4K, you know, graphics or anything like that. They just want a system. They got their you know old 1080p TV back in their room or in their in their living room. They just want to play some games. You know, that is the best console to get right now if you're not the super hardcore into into uh you know uh, exclusives. PS4 is a great console to get too. I'm not going to dog anybody if they say I want to play Division, I want to play Call of Duty, Battlefield, NBA. Uh, if you say you're going to get an Xbox uh, One S over a PS4. That's actually a good deal because I'm going to suggest yeah. to you right now to go get Game Pass because right yeah. there you got th three months for a buck and you can try out all these games and see if you like them. But if you tell me you want a PS4, okay, that's cool too. PS4 is a great system and I can tell you all these great uh, exclusives to get to. There's no wrong way to go right now and that's really awesome for us gamers, but a, a real wrong way to go is to go get that all digital version at a price point at uh, at, like, at 250 It doesn't make any sense to me. And that's why I feel like uh, Microsoft doing all these things right, uh, all these things trying to you know, course correct, and this is a misstep for them for sure. Yeah, it it doesn't make any sense, man. It it, it doesn't. I mean, I, I don't know what else to say. It doesn't make sense. Do it for do it for two hundred dollars, and then people are going to start flocking to it. Sure, two hundred bucks, and it's a good viable option because then how much would that version be on the holiday season? It's already fifty dollars less. Maybe that's at one fifty. You know? If it was, if it was still two fifty and it had two terabytes of hard drive, it might be worth that extra two that it extra fifty. Be, it might be worth it because you're looking at having a two terabyte. If you if you're just a downloader, like you download your games, that's mm -hmm. the way you digest them and purchase them. That's fine, you know. But that's no incentive. There's no incentive there to buy it. Not at all. Um. So now we're going to switch over and talk about PlayStation 5 because I'm tired of be, uh, being so negative. <laughs> um, which sucks because I don't want to be negative on Xbox. Oh, crap. Hold on. Uh, crap. Okay. Yeah, I, I went to one of those uh, you know pages that didn't load up an auto video when I loaded up this article, but then it wanted to be an auto video. 
So, yeah. uh, I believe it was last week, uh, the architect of the PS4, Mark Cerny, uh, he sat down with Wired and they went over the specs for the PS5, which is a bit of a different way to do it instead of doing a big event or anything. They kind of just said, yeah, this is what's going to be, um, this is what we're looking at. And, uh, yeah, you know, it's going to be cool. So what do we learn? Well, we learned a little about, about about what's underneath the hood, and we also learned that as of right now, the only thing that they're willing to confirm about backwards compatibility is PS4, which at the very base minimum is no excuse. It, there's no excuse why it shouldn't be. Uh, of course, we all want complete backwards all the way to one, you know. So like the so the fact that it is backwards compatible with the PS4 should be no excuse. Like that is, I mean. I'm hoping for the complete backwards, but this was like there was no reason why they shouldn't have it. Right. Wow. All right. Anyway, so the they were also talking about how like the transition from four to five won't be as drastic as saying going from from, from, from the three to four since it's based on a pretty similar architect and it will also accept physical discs. They're keeping them physical at least w- within uh, this uh, generation. And there, um, what's underneath the hood? Uh, it'll be an AMD chip that is uh, based on the third generation Ryzen, uh, and will have eight cores of the seven nanometer Zen two chip microchip. Uh, and though the console will support 8K displaying at this resolution, will be dependent on TVs catching up to that. So uh, they're future proofing the console. We don't know how well it'll run games at 8K. You know, we're not going to know that until somebody who actually has the access to that. But, uh, you know, which won't be either one of us. For no, a, hell for no. A while. Hell no. But the idea is that if they're already saying that console is going to be able to do that, that should mean that there should be no excuse for any game getting 4K 60 frames like baseline. Because, it, you know, I can understand if the game is running 8K and it's like, you know, uh, well, it, it may, it may be locked at 30. Well, okay, because 8K is not going to be a damn thing for a long time, right? At least not for the basic consumer. The graphics will be driven by the custom version of the Radeon's Navi line, and this graphics chip will support ray tracing, which is, you know, becoming a thing, especially uh, with the high, more high-powered graphics cards on the PC. So it'll be interesting to see that on a console for the first time. And, uh, quote, if you wanted to run tests to see if the player can hear certain audio sources or if the enemies can hear the players, footsteps, ray tracing is useful for that. It's all, it's all the same uh, thing as taking, uh, taking a ray uh, through the environment. In fact, audio is one of the big improvements that they've been keen to talk about. The AMD chip will, be, will enable 3D audio, which according to Cerny is a key to immersing players deeper. This naturally led to discussions of the VR. They're going heavy into the VR with this. They were designing this to be a beast uh, for uh, for VR, unlike the pretty, uh, I'm sure PlayStation's going to try and keep the VR stuff as affordable as possible. They don't want to go super crazy with it and make it a really baseline consoleized version of VR. Uh, he said, "I won't go into the details of VR strategy beyond saying that VR is very important to us. And that the current PSVR headset is compatible with the new console, which makes me think they're going to make a new updated one as well. The other key leap that the play- next PlayStation will make comes to with its hard drive. Of course, it's uh, according to Sony, developers let Sony know they want a solid-state drives in the new hardware as opposed to slower equivalents used in the current consoles. These SSDs are relatively prevalent now in new la- in laptops, and Sony is bringing that to the next PlayStation. Uh, is described as being specialized for the hardware. Uh, he demonstrated that, that the change in the SSD to the to gaming by comparing a load sequence from Insomniac Spider-Man. A standard PS4 Pro and a dev kit in the next gen PlayStation. On the former, the uh, the uh, the fast travel was about 15 seconds, and on the PS5 dev kit, it was 0.8 seconds. This certainly added has implications on how the world can be rendered too, which in turn impacts how quickly Spidey can move through the world. On the new hardware, the camera moves through the city much quicker, as the new hardware is capable of keeping up with rendering requirements. I mean that's that's great. It's about time they moved to solid state. Absolutely. But also, it kills games that have load times scenes in them because Spidey has like <laughs> on the train and he's talking to other Spider Man or he's playing on his phone or you know whatever. There's something something interesting to see. Mm-hmm. So 
I mean, it's not a necessity to have that, but yeah, it'd be nice to have faster load times, but it won't help Anthem any. <laughs> Probably not. Because mine's on an M2 drive, which is a fast, one of the faster SSDs you can buy, and it does not load any faster at all. So, uh, Cerny continued about the solid state, saying that the raw speed, the raw read speed is important, but so are the details of the input output mechanisms uh, and, and the software stack that we put on top of them. I got a PS4 Pro and then I put in a solid state that might cost as much as the PS4 Pro. It might be one third faster. And uh, the, the, the shared architecture between PS4 and PS5 naturally creates a path for games being developed on the former to appear on the latter. Which, you know, uh, what, like, we have the, uh, like, Death Stranding, they say here, which is developed by Kojima. Uh, Cerny was asked how Death Stranding fits in the PS5's plans to have cross-generation cross releases. And reportedly, and he smiled before a spokesperson merely repeated the game would come to PS4. <laughs> uh, obviously, this is a clear indication that, of course, we've heard uh, rumors that there would be PS5 versions uh available of those games and of course probably my guess would be if you had a ps4 version of it a four version that you would probably get an update for the ps5 version when you put it in and say hey this is to you know get the like just like when you would with the pro uh versus the regular that hey we're gonna get you know full 4k capability out of this game uh, so uh now uh, interestingly enough uh they didn't talk about the price point. There's been rumors about five hundred dollars, which makes sense to me, right. uh, because they want to keep this consumer friendly. I heard something the other day about four hundred. An analyst said four hundred. I think you are wrong on that. You are. I this is not five is going to be the standard. I think five will be just right for this. This will allow them to kind of have a dual. Like you'll you'll have your PS4 still on sale for a while. You have the new PS5, PS5 five hundred dollars. They 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 saw how well Xbox. Uh, did with the Xbox One X, so you know you're you'll be able to make the PS4 base base system a lot cheaper, hopefully, and then you know hopefully uh, start phasing out uh, like like the PS4 Pro or phasing out one of the models that we only have one PS4 model, and then right. you, and then you have the PS5, but then then there were rumors about like hey there's uh you know now that the PS5 stuff has come out, how is that gonna you know We've heard, you know, that, you know, these specs for the PS5 are even better than what was rumored. So it's like, that's awesome. They're future proof in the console. And, uh, you know, what does this mean on the other side of the aisle? Uh, apparently, an insider for Xbox tweeted multiple insiders now confirmed that the Xbox Anaconda, Anaconda. <laughs> will be more advanced as rumored. And uh, they did didn't mention any specific, you know, you know, specifics. But for the uh, Anaconda to stop to top the PS5 spec wise, it will need to pack a serious punch. Cerny teased that the PS5 will have a support solid state, and of course, uh, the way that Cerny talked is that the PS5 architecture is really being worked into utilized the solid state drive, uh, being used to like really capitalize on the speed of that. Just like as he said with rendering, so it wouldn't just be load times or saving times; it would be even just, you know, graphical rendering, you know, it, it, like it would just make everything faster. Um, most notably here, PS5 will support 14 teraflops. Wee. <laughs> of course, we remember first hearing about the whole teraflop crap, wondering what the heck it means. It, it'll it support 14 teraflops of graphical power, according to an epic list of leaks. Posted the base bin, which also means it, it can complete 14 trillion operations per second. That's more than triple the capabilities of PS4 Pro. Uh, to one up the PS5s in terms of terms of graphical capabilities, the Xbox new Xbox would have to be even more powerful than 14 teraflops, which the Xbox One X currently does six. Right, and uh, so we will see where Xbox One uh, because. Of course, the difference between the new Xbox and the new PlayStation is going to be in the details. Because I can imagine they're probably going to have a pretty similar GPU and CPU. We're going to get a pretty similar thing out of it. But then it's going to be in how each one is tailored to its art. Like, we know Xbox is looking at streaming, you know. And how they're probably going to tailor their new Xbox to, to, 
to cloud and doing all that kind of crap. So with PlayStation, it seems like they're really pushing. We need to get, you know, as great video quality as we need to get. Because if they are pushing their console to be able to be AK comp- you know, compatible, that means they want their console to run even better on VR. Is what I'm is what I'm hearing out of it. Yeah, but <laughs> to be honest, the average consumer is not going to see the difference because no. those teraflops are great. Um, obviously, the X runs better than everything out right now. It actually shows true 2k 4k capabilities but for those consumers of the masses 14 15 teraflops you're never going to even notice what that is i mean i can i notice it on my pc but i have a a big rig i have a super expensive monitor like I, i spent the money on it you on your 4K TV are not going to notice it. The only way that any of these real stats are going to shine are on 8K. So a couple, like 4% of the population that has owns it is going to notice it. I, I just don't think those numbers really matter at this point. As long as they're loading the games, everything's running smooth at 4K, 60 frames a second. It, well, considering well, that the PS4 they, Pro... Dick, essentially. Well, considering that the, that the PS4 Pro, on general, uh, cannot do full blown 4K at 60 no. frames, the Xbox One X can, but not every game is tailored suited for it. Uh, that this next gen is going to be like that's baseline, you know, 60 frames 4K baseline. So that's going to bring everybody up, and then of course going up to that next level, as, as we saw with the beginning of this generation back in 2013, how affordable were 4K back then? Because these consoles weren't even, you know, the original X or you know Xbox One and PS4 couldn't do 4K. They can't, and they could barely even do 1080 on some games back then when they were first getting started. I, I remember uh, some games were 900p in order to get 60 frames, and and it's ridiculous. Yeah, but it, I mean, these consoles were a little underpowered when they came out. And then, of course, they had their little stopgap, their One X, the PS4 Pro. Hey, you know, and the PS4 Pro is like, 4K! And the Xbox is like, yeah, okay. But I feel like them, they're, you know, will we see with 4K and how quickly that just overtook, like, you? if I go buy TV right now, I have to look to get a 1080p console yeah or i or I'm, excuse me a tv i actually have to go in and ask for it and say where's i just want 1080 because the the base models that are up are basic 4k and that's what you're gonna get when you have different levels you have different uh you know quality levels of minutia of 4k you know is a phillips 4k or is that as good as a samsung 4k i mean that's all in the eye of the beholder I probably think I'll pro- if I had the choice of the two, I'm probably going to go with Samsung. Samsung's always been good to me, and their pictures always been great. Uh, but like you know, s- s- you know, sitting there in the store, there's only a few TVs I've ever seen in a store that have blown me away, and uh, one of them was a Samsung at Best Buy, and that's because it was on its own thing. When you have yeah. all the when you have all those TVs all next to each other, to me they all start looking the same, and some of them look like shit. And that's because yeah. and that's because they're all going off of the same, you know, the, uh, like just putting the same video feed, so it gets you know, you know, broken down over time, and then, of course, like you know, uh, the audio quality de- you know degenerates the more that you split it. But, but like, I really feel like these next gen consoles, it's going to bring everybody up to basic 4K, and hopefully within within five because you because you know that they want these consoles to be 10 years, right? Even though the active, uh, of course, we're looking at six uh, years now, and then uh, if they launch 2020, it'll be seven years. So even though it, it's like a 10-year total, but then like, you know, but six or seven years, the next console version, whatever is going to come out, they want these consoles to be future-proofed. So uh, think to ourselves in 10 years, how affordable is AK, and how is that just going to be commonplace on the storefront? And I don't. I think they don't want the same issue to happen again. Where like they launched their console, and then it's like now this technology is even more affordable 
they want that they and then for them to have to put out a separate console or a stopgap. I don't think they want to do that. I don't think they do either, but we'll see. So Nintendo uh, is killing it with the Switch. They just surpassed the N64 lifetime sales, if I if I remember correctly, which is great. I mean, that's awesome, crazy. And uh, so for the Switch, of course, we've had rumors for a while. Switch a Switch Mini, uh, and like Switch Pro, right? And I remember, like, right before the Switch even came out, there were rumors of a Pro. Like, we did an episode on it, like, like a long time ago. Like, Switch Pro? <laughs> We're not, we don't even have the Switch yet. But there is an article that I have here that has much... The smaller, budget-friendly Switch will launch in, in late June. Not in the fall. Uh, this right. is according to uh, a VG247.com. A news report... Uh, States that the budget-friendly Switch of the uh, console will launch at the end of June. Last week, the ports out of Japan stated this particular Switch uh, SKU would launch in the fall, just like I said. Today, Bloomberg sources state the console will arrive in late June. Bloomberg also reiterated previous reports slating that a slightly upgraded version of the console is in the works. The site sources that said that that version would launch uh, before the year's end. Last week, they said that... Uh, We'll launch in the fall. Oh, wait. Hello. Hi. Hi. What's up, Dudorito? When are you talking? Uh, I'm talking to, to old Mike, and we're doing a podcast. <laughs> do, do you want to say hi to everybody? Hi, everybody. Are you hi, do buddy. A... You even have yeah, you got your hat on? Yeah. That's we're, cool. Yeah. We're just yeah. talking about what are you saying. Are we talking about video games? Mm-hmm. Do you like video games? Of course games? we are. Yeah. What what so what video games do you like? Hmm. Mario Sing You like Mario? Yeah. It's Mario Sing Nate's game. <laughs> <laughs> um so what uh mm-hmm. what does Mario do? He just jumps and run. He jumps and runs, yeah, that's pretty much the gist of Who's that? Patfoot. Patfoot. That is Patfoot. Yeah, Patfoot. Yeah, he's at. He's a bit foot. <laughs> he's hiding. He's hiding. He's, he's hiding he's for me. Foot. He's hiding for me. Hey, dude. Um, he so, can hear you. Yeah. Are you like? Are you going to bed soon? Yes. Yeah. Did you come to say good night? Yeah. Yeah. I, I love you, Dudorino. I love you. Are you gonna have a good night? <laughs> yeah. You gonna get some good sleep? <laughs> You gotta get some good sleep that we can play tomorrow, huh? Hey, hey, don't, hey, we don't mess with the cord. So Paul Ming's singing, so I want to keep talking. You just want to keep talking? Yeah. <laughs> so I'm sick of hiding thing because this is your computer. It is my computer, yeah. Yeah, that's what we do our show on. Is that Spotify and that's for watching podcasts? <laughs> yeah, that is a Spotify. You know you know your stuff, don't you? You're a pretty good podcaster. Go and high singing us. I'm saying we're hiding things, and my tummy keeps screaming more. <laughs> and that's in the hiding and there's something I can do. You are silly. I'm seeing an async swing, because this is where you're saying pacing, and I'm done with seeing a high thing, or just seeing a high again. I can barely understand this. <laughs> I'm not too sure what he said at all. So <laughs> yeah, I, I'm glad because I have no idea. Because <laughs> we just sky singles and we just ah. What's funny is that is that he's a, he's really good with his words and he, and, you know, and sentences, but then and he gets carried away and just starts speaking gibberish. But right? you were sad yeah. like that. Yeah. But it's sad passing, and I just. Feel angry and I just fly in the sky. <laughs> you fly in the sky? Yes, I did, but I still had to say God and I said, I should go like this. La, 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 la. Oh my gosh, you're silly. Yeah, but it's a pause sitting at high and I just plunging and I just be silly like this. <laughs> you are silly. I love you. I love you too. Okay. Okay. Let's get out. Good night, Bubba. Love you. Love you. 
Say bye. 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 Right. So that was the uh, the the Wyatt interruption of, of the show. Very interesting. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Just interesting stuff being dropped there. Dude, he had a lot to say. And uh, so we have this whole like rumor of the uh, more portable, consumer friendly, kid friendly version of the Switch, which this has kind of been in the rumor for a while because it seems like they're getting ready to start phasing out the 3DS, which came out. The 3DS dude came out like 2010. Yeah. It is a long time ago. That system is so old now. Uh, previous reports that the mini version wouldn't connect to televisions or be placed in a dock. This is due to it being a handheld only system similar to the 2DS. However, uh, I'm trying to uh, Nick Hayes. I'm not sure how you, uh, how you say that, but there were this person's report um, iterates a second um, that that they say otherwise about this about that one. So I'm going to load that article up because Nick A article. Oh, it, uh, it's all in Japanese. Yeah, good luck. I have a you Google. Translate. Do you have Google Translator on there? Yeah, hold on, it's going. Um. <laughs> it makes no sense, does it? Oh, dude. <laughs> so I'm just gonna read it and, and see how this is. Nintendo has opened up uh, the world home video game market from scratch. The goal is to move away from battery management, whose performance fluctuates depending on the presence of or absence of. Hit works and to shift to a group of leadership system, but it but if it goes too far, it will damage the DNA of the cre uh, of the creative company representing Japan. Nintendo's worries are profound, and and between originality and stability. And then there's a little bullet point. It says outrageous curtain. Outrageous uh, curtain. Okay. <laughs> December 2018. I know. I noticed came from Nintendo under a major. Uh, under the major parts manufacturer, we we, we will stop developing the, the QOL business. It was a dead end. Oh, great. Now, like, I have to subscribe to this damn thing to read the rest of it. Ink force. Well, tag nabbit. Please pay us money. Please pay us money. Here's, here's the sites. Yeah. Yeah. Well, if you remember, like uh, at lunch today, I was trying to look up reviews for Avengers Endgame, and there was a negative one, or like at least two out of four, which is like you know halfway. Which on, excuse me, Rotten Tomatoes was a, you know, it, it was the only like review I saw. I'm like, oh, I want to see what this guy said about it. No, I have to subscribe to see it. Oh, well, buddy, if it's that important uh, that you're like this movie is so so, it did this, it did that. That maybe I should be, you know, I want to see that, man. I want to see what people say about a, a movie or a game, you know. <laughs> I don't want to just read the good reviews. I want to read the bad ones. Of course, like, right. you know, the old, like, bad review read that never made the air a long time ago. But I sent you a picture uh, about, you know, some mock-ups of what could be. Yes. And uh, you believe that the Switch Mini or whatever is going to be more akin to, like, the the regular Switch Probably the same size and everything. But there was this other one that somebody made up that I think would be perfect if they want to try and capitalize on that 2DS, 3DS market. And it, it's like a clamshell type. It's called the, the, the Switch Flip. And with the handheld, it's got like the 2DS slider sticks instead of the actual analogs. Which, as for a kid, I don't know. Like... I completely understand what they're doing with this because they kind of want it to be a little bit more kid-proof, kid-friendly, unlike the original Switch, which is pretty much a disaster for a kid. I don't want my kid to ever touch my Switch. He wants to so bad. But <laughs> yeah, yeah. I would let him touch this one a little bit more because uh, even though like they can break the, like, the clamshell video thing like I have with that or like the 2DS or like the 2DS XL, sorry, but and, or, the, or the 3DS and the other DS models. But the kids are so used to that now that hopefully... You know, dropping your switch on the floor as is, disaster. Dropping a clamshell, maybe, maybe not so. And maybe there, are, you know, there are rumors about it being having a mini dock where you could just put that on there and then use other Joy Cons or Switch Pro. Of course, the reports have varied and rumored. Who knows whether or not the, a Switch Mini would be even be uh, dockable? Right. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, I think maybe that it would be cool that you could get a smaller dock later on for it well that's what they're saying like not the dock that comes with the switch now but a separate dock would ship with this one 
like and, it, right. and it's a different who knows i uh, of course the rumor is coming out in june i think that's really fast really soon i could see them announcing it and bundling them with the new pokemon since the new pokemon po- pokemon's more of a kid it's kid centric of course it's kid it's all over the place for you know, like more adults play it than kids but kids do love that so i could see them doing bundles with that if, if they're going to do it but i don't see it coming out in june dude no no that's too soon i don't think so you know e, you know e3 is pretty loaded this year you know and what better time for us to come back on a weekly basis than coming up towards e3 the new new stuff new new thoughts of course uh yeah you know sony's not gonna be there at all so who knows what's going on with that maybe they're gonna do a surprise little uh direct thing uh you know that would be since they've already in, like done that once and it was kind of a just a boring uh yeah boring nothing show uh, uh other than like a last minute hype thing for days gone which that's out this week hey you know but then uh you yeah, know does having a show with nothing we want to see yeah no starfield no you know no elder scrolls uh so uh, Xbox so is, it gonna, so is it going to be all Dragon Inquisition or, or not Dragon Age? Well, that's Bioware. Yeah, yeah, I know. Hey, so what is it going to be about? Well, you know, uh, it I mean, can't be more Fallout because, well, I mean, you, you they shot like, that in the foot. That's 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 dead right you know, now. It's it's funny that you said Dragon Age because like both Bioware and Bethesda are pretty much like under uh, under the gun right now. Yeah. Uh, so. Uh, honestly, Bethesda way worse than Bioware. I Bio- feel like Bethesda's Bethesda's right now kicking and screaming as they're being drugged to the back. Okay, so so Bioware has been a gradual decline over a number of years. You know, pretty much since the EA acquisition, uh, it, it's been a slow decline. It's been unfortunate, but it's there. And then with Bethesda, they were the golden child. And they were running very hard, very fast, and all at once they fell right in their face on the cement. Yep. And then it, it, it's like that guy that falls in the race, but just keeps trying to get up and just keeps falling. Here's here's the, here's the biggest thing. Whenever you do a bug fix that removes a bug that players have been utilizing to boost characters. But the game is so bad that people are threatening to never play it again if they don't bring this bug back because the game lacks so much substance that people don't want to play it. Or what about like the fact that a new update brought back a previous bug that they fixed? Anyway, Xbox is going to be there as well. Uh, and they they're promising their 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 biggest uh, E three presence ever. Of course, they're gonna take every advantage of Sony not being there. Of course, we're hearing rumors about new stuff from all their studios. We might be seeing new announced games. From Fable. A lot. Yeah. Hey, you know, maybe so. Maybe a brand new rebooted Fable. Maybe maybe we'll see something on Halo Infinite. I don't know. I do think I think they will announce the new Xbox at the end of the show. I think it's going to be kind of like what they did with the X, where we're going to get a tease. We're not going to get a full thing, but they're going to be like, there is more to come for Xbox, and check this out. I think that they will do that, but I think that they will show Halo Infinite in that. So they're going to say, here is the new Xbox whatever, because obviously by then they're going to have, it's getting close enough to where they might actually have a real name for it. And it won't be Anaconda, but it'll be like that. Might be and, the code uh, name, like they did with Project Scorpio when they, yeah. like, you know, basically. And boom, this is your new Xbox Two. <laughs> and then boom, here it is, and it's showing Halo. Xbox One Two. One Two. <laughs> Next, they need three, and then Switch. <laughs> One two switch. Oh my gosh! Yeah, but, but I think that would be a good way to show that game and maybe show off. Obviously, you are making Infinite for this specific console, so you need to show what it's capable of. So right. that's the go-to game because that's an in-house studio. A bit of a tech demo, you know. Yeah. Uh, and of course, then we also have uh, well, EA is going to be there. Woot. Uh, Ubisoft will be there, of course, and then uh, Square. They'll be there. 
Probably we're probably going to see our first glimpse at FF7. I hope we are going to see the new like it, it makes all the sense in the world. They've been making some sort of Avengers game over there. So yeah. why why not? Like especially with all the hype coming off of this next movie, you're going to want to say, "Hey guys, we're making this game and you guys love that movie by our game." So uh, E3 is going to be pretty exciting to cover this year. It's going to be a bit different. We will try and live stream what we can. We don't know, of course. Yeah. Last year, Microsoft and Bethesda were like, in EA, or were like, EA was on Saturday and we were at work. But then, like, Microsoft and then Bethesda were on Sunday. And we'll try and, and stream a reaction to those. And of course, Nintendo will do a direct. So uh, that won't be live as, as we would do that. But if, it, but if it's a direct, maybe we'll do, maybe we won't watch it. And then we'll come home and watch it and react to it. Right. But we have the capability, hopefully, to do that now. As long as our equipment wants to uh, cooperate. We've been having some some technical difficulties this episode. A bit of a podcast luck, if you will, coming back with uh, my computer crashing right in the middle of the episode. Hopefully, you guys won't notice too bad. And then, of course, us trying to redo that. And then us having to completely redo it again because of my incompetence. And uh, hopefully... <laughs> Hopefully we're good. This last time, last time we're doing this, but you know, had a cool episode. My game, my kid came in and was really excitedly uh, said a, a bunch of stuff. Uh, he, he he gets so excited. Um, I think he'll be a good podcaster one day. Uh, he definitely has a lot to say. <laughs> yeah, for sure. I unfortunately, dude, I didn't get to see him a lot today, and I won't get to see him a lot tomorrow. Uh, I'm doing uh, po- podcastrophy has a game of king chair. I'll be guesting on that tomorrow, uh, and that is, of course, their uh, their Game of Thrones uh, review podcast series. That I was on the original concept of Game of King Chair. I was, I was a podcast review episode two way back in the day, and I have officially dubbed the trio that's going to be on this episode myself, our friend Blaine, and then uh, and Nick Maxson, the uh, the small council. <laughs> we are the small council. Is it getting smaller? Well, uh, I really, well, I don't know, dude. Uh, it's going to be funny because it's like, what would, like, I was thinking today, what would we be? You know, it was like, uh, the, uh, the, you have like the, the master of, uh, master of secrets or master of tales. You have the master of the, ma- ma- the master of the military. And I, I just think it'd be so funny and, uh, tongue in cheek to call Blaine the master of coin with, with how bad at money he is. I mean, that's what Littlefinger did. He just borrowed it from the bank. Well, actually, a lot of that was Robert, man. King Robert was terrible with money. He, all, all he wanted to do was drink and, and and do all that crap. So, dude, thank you so much for uh, for being here this week and dealing with these technical difficulties. You are back. You're feeling better? Yep. Uh, I do. You, I definitely feel better. You, I can breathe. You can breathe. No impending doom. And uh, I mean, I have impending doom right now because of how bad this episode has gone on a technical level. But hopefully you, the audience, will never even notice that. Of course, you can check us out each and every single Wednesday. We're back now every single week uh, on, 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 the, on the live stream for as long as we're actively live streaming the show. As long as I don't get shut down by a computer failure. So we we live stream, of course, each and every single Wednesday on twitch.tv slash Game Addicts Play and on our Facebook page. You can check out check us out there as well, as well as our other uh, social medias, Twitter and Instagram at Game Addicts Play there as well. The audio version of the show hits audio platforms such as Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher, TuneIn Radio, I smack my, I smack my mic, uh, all the other stuff. Uh, that comes out on Thursdays. And, of course, if we're not on your favorite one, hit us up. Let us know. I want to know because I want to get us on as many platforms as possible. And audio and video versions both hit YouTube on Friday. Of course, that's a one-stop shop for all of our stuff, including gameplay videos, which there's more to come in the future on that as well. Hit us, hit us up on the Game Addicts. Search Game Addicts Podcast on YouTube. will show up. Help us grow that as well. Guys, thank you so much for checking out this episode this week. And from the bottom of my heart, Welcome back, Mike. It's been fun to have you back. I can't wait to do more podcasts with you. Until next week, I've been Brando. And I've been Mike. And we'll see you then, guys. Game on.